ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to the wonderful Chardelet Marina. Okay, so I've started fishing. I've just gone in on a lighter rig just to have a look. And I've hooked something big. Ooh, I'm interested to see what this is actually. Look at him. Not necessarily got the right gear on for this. So we're in Derbyshire, um, not far from the Nottinghamshire and Leicestershire border. This is a marina that's fed by the River Trent. And it's a venue that I've not fished for quite a long time. And I used to fish it quite a bit, actually. I used to come down pleasure fishing. Quite an interesting venue. It's quite deep, mixed uh, fishery. So today's video is going to be really about how I'm going to approach a venue I've not been, for, been to for a while. And I don't know how it's fishing at the moment or, or really what we're going to catch. So it's just a case of uh, trying to work, the ha work that out. And I'll uh, hopefully show you a few tips and tricks on how to catch a few fish from these sort of venues. Right, so I'm going to plumb up my peg now. So obviously I've got myself comfortable in my water, in the water I should say. I've got everything around me that I need. So obviously we need to plumb up and plumb the depth and find out where I want to fish. So, stick a plummet on. Now, obviously I have fished this venue before quite a while ago and I know it's roughly like eight, nine feet deep. So I've put a rig on. We'll start plumbing from about the 11 metre joint. Now I do know this venue gets a little bit deeper the further out you go. Tell you what, that's not a bad guess. Now, that's about right, I'm happy with that. I'll just shallow that up just slightly. So what I want to do here is obviously plumb down to, generally speaking, the bottom of the body is always a good guide. I just allows for a little bit of line to be laid on the bottom and lets the rig relax and obviously not too much line on the bottom. We don't need that today with the conditions we've got. It's absolutely flat calm, so we don't need to worry about laying line on the water and the venue towing or anything like that. So I'm just having a plumb around now and just making sure it's nice and flat, which it is, as you can probably see. Hopefully Luke's picking that up on the big doofer. There we go. Ship half a section back. Let's have a little plumb around. It's always worth just spending the time making sure that you're fishing somewhere that's nice and flat. So when you're putting your bait in, it's not going to be on um, an uneven surface or somewhere there's potentially snags and things like that. That's absolutely ideal. So now I've plumbed the depth. We can have a look at sort of roughly what depth we've got. Like I thought, yeah, we've got probably about eight foot there, which is absolutely ideal. So I'll set my rigs up next and we'll have a look at the rigs I'm going to select to, uh, to fish today. Okay, so now we've plumbed up. Um, I'll talk to you about what rigs I've decided to go with and um, how they're shotted and what lines and elastics and things I've used. So, obviously we're going to be fishing over ground bait today and I have selected three different rigs for fishing over ground bait. The first one I've set up is a gram, without knocking everything over, a gram pencil float. So to start with, we've got a slip five elastic, a solid five is really great for roach skimmers and all these sort of natural venues fishing. Um, I've got a gram pencil float with the conditions being absolutely spot on like they are today. I thought this would be absolutely ideal with a short lash, lowering it straight over the top of the ground bait, getting, getting a nice quick bite, less resistance by the float because of its slim shape, and that way we should be able to hit plenty of bites. So we've got a 012 hybrid mono mainline. I've got a bulk of number eight shot, with a couple of little trimmers on there just to dot the bristle down. Then I've got number nines tapered down there, about four inches apart. And they're tapered down to a six inch up length of 010 and a size 18 uh, sphere match. That one is rig number one. Rig number two is same elastic, which is a, a slip five. And we've got a gram and a quarter wire stem float, nice fiber bristle, which I think is really important in these sort of venues. The light's a bit difficult in here today because obviously all the different shallows from the boats and the sky and the trees, it's all different colors. So a nice visible bristle is absolutely ideal. And this is a fiber one. So 012 mainline, 
we have got a shot bulk again this is a shot bulk of number nines that's about 18 inches to, from the hook and I've got a taper there of number nines down to a six inch hook length so that's going to be probably my main rig for catching over the top of ground bait when like I say when it's if it's really good that pencil will be ideal lowering it straight in and getting a quick bite but this will probably be my go-to rig for most of the day my third rig is again nice and straightforward slip five 012 mainline this is a 0.75 version of the same float that's a, a just a slightly lighter a stepped down version so we've got move that shot down we've got a bulk of shot there and a, a, they're all number nines and these are number tens in a taper and that bulk is slightly higher we've got about two feet there so that way we've got a slightly slower fall and that should pick off those wary fish or any fish that are sitting just off the bottom and following the bait down so that'll be if the fishing gets a little bit more difficult perhaps i want to try just through the water in that bottom bottom you know third i can i can fish with this rig it just offers a slightly different presentation and the last rig i've set up because we're going to be loose feeding some bait today um, i needed a rig to fish through the water and obviously as i'm loose feeding hemp and casters potentially some maggots i'll need a rig to fish through the water so again slip five elastic we've got 012 main line now the float i've selected is a little it is an interesting one really because i've gone for what would most would call a commercial style float so it's a slim body but it's a 1.5 mil hollow bristle and i've been using these on venues like the stainy and things like that when the light's difficult and you need a bristle that you can dot right down but you can still see obviously with all the different light and the, all the different shadows you do need a bristle you can see and these are absolutely ideal that's a 1.5 mil bristle but it just allows me to dot it right down to a pimple and i can still see it it's nice and visible really sensitive but obviously visible got a little bulk down here that's about three feet from the hook and that's three number eights and i've just got shot four inches apart they're number tens four inches apart in fact now that's wrong they're number 11s i'm wrong number 11s they're just tapered out in the in the bottom sort of third of the rig and that will offer a nice sort of slow fall the idea of having the shot sort of set out in this pattern allows me to keep a nice straight line between the float and the hook and that fishing with baits like castor and hemp on the drop you want to see all the indications you'll see little dips and little dinks and obviously all these shots will register on the bristle as it's sinking and that way you're able to stay in touch with the bait and hopefully hit all those bites off roach and and the fish that are feeding up in the water so they're the three rigs i have selected for today's fishing and hopefully we can catch a few fish with all of them okie dokie so now we've we've plumbed up we've found where we want to fish we've got rigs we want to use and we're we're all ready to go so now key part of the day obviously we need to work out what bait we're going to put in how we're going to feed the peg so to start with ground bait this is a mixed up last night um, which is a little bit of Sonia Bates, not to knock everything over, Sonia Bates Black Roach and Sonia Bates Black River. Nothing fancy, these are just absolutely fantastic ground baits for this sort of fishing. Um, lots and lots of hemp in both of them, they bind really well. We're not talking crazy, crazy sticky, but there's enough binding in there to take the bait down to the bottom and obviously carry down some of my loose offerings, which the roach are all going to eat. So this is a really great um, ground bait for this sort of fishing on natural venues. I do tend to like a, uh, a dark mix for this type of fishing, especially at this time of year when the water's really cold and gone really clear. You've heard it times many, but dark ground baits, generally speaking, are better for this sort of fishing. So I wouldn't go anywhere roach fishing without casters. Now, fortunately, in Nottingham, we can get some really great casters and I'm spoiled with uh, Nathan's in Nottingham. They sort me out with some fantastic casters. I've got some pinkies. I've got a mixture of fluoro and red pinkies. They'll be for if, if it's a little bit tricky at times and I'll feed some of those in the ground bait as well. Coarse red maggots, some fantastic big red maggots. We need some of those for loose feeding as well. And last but not least, probably my favorite bait for roach fishing is hemp. Um, people like to cook their own stuff, but this Sonia Bates tinned hemp is absolutely fantastic. And I hook this stuff as well. I don't do my own hookers, I just feed um, tinned hemp and hook tinned hemp and I have no issues with that, but I'll do a little thing later on how I hook it so you can see how I get my bait on the hook. 
So a couple of tins of that, a few bits and bobs on the side tray and we're ready to go. Okay, so we've obviously selected where we're going to fish and we've got our rigs ready for what we're going to do today. So now it's the key part of actually putting the bait in. So with the ground bait I was showing you earlier, what I've done, I've made up five balls. Three slightly bigger ones. Now these have got next to no loose feed in. There's a few grains of hemp and the odd caster. As you can see looking around them, there's not loads of bait in there. I'm going to ball those in, that's going to create an area for us to fish on. Now, I think it's really important on venues like this and natural venues, you create a bit of an area to fish on, rather than, put, you know, like on commercial venues when you'd potentially be fishing small amounts of bait in really, really tight areas and being very, very accurate, fishing over the top of pellets and things like that. I think when you're trying to catch roach and skimmers in venues like this, I think it's important to create a bit of an area. So that's going to be the three balls I'm going to chuck in. It's going to create a bit of a bed for the fish to home in on. And then I'm going to cup in two slightly richer balls. Now these have got quite a lot of bait in. There's a little tiny bit of chop worm. There's some casters, there's some hemp, there's some maggots, there's some pinkies. So these slightly smaller balls are going to be the richer balls with all the bait in that are going to sort of concentrate the fish somewhat in the centre of the, this sort of area of bed of feed I've created. And that way they should be easier to catch. But I think the fish do like to sit over a bit of a bed of bait. And that way with a bigger area, uh, you know, this should be relatively easy to catch. I don't want them all right on top of each other and really, really accurately. I think, I think that's when you get problems with sort of missed bites. I think you create a bit of a bed and concentrate them in the centre. That way you can, you can hopefully catch a few fish. So, I'm going to cup in one of my rich balls and then use my pot as a marker. That's going to be the method for the day. So, in the pot, one of the richer balls. I'm going to ship that out. It's my marker. And obviously being in a marina, we've got millions of things to line up with. So pole section right on my elbow. So we know we're cupping in the same place. So I'm going to use the chimney of that boat as my marker. I'm going to cut that ball in. That's it. Now, pole between the legs. Without hitting the cup, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna throw in three now. So I'm gonna ball these in. There we go. Created a bit of a, a better feed. And now what I'm gonna do is cup in that last ball right in, on my marker. That's the, one, the second rich ball, and that way we've got three, three balls creating that bed of uh, bait, and those two richer balls to hopefully concentrate the fish. And hopefully we can go in and catch a few. Okay, so we started fishing, and as if by magic, they knew the cameras was here. I've just got in on a lighter rig, just to have a look. And I've hooked something big. So naturally Luke's switched the camera on, which has added loads of pressure. Now, there's an 010 hook length, an 18 sphere match, so it's not, a, it's not gonna be. Ooh, I'm interested to see what this is actually. Like I said, I've got balanced tackle on here, slip five elastic through one section, which tightens up quite nicely, actually. I've got a feeling this is going to be a big perch. Look at him. He is a big perch. So now, folks, I'm going to try and play it back expertly and not lose it in these weeds. So what I was doing, I'd just gone in on my, on my bolt rigs, caught a few roach, which was nice. Started loose feeding a bit of bait and getting some indications. So I thought I'd just try a try the, the caster rig. First put in and I've hooked something quite sizeable. I think he's a big perch. The way he's fighting it feels like a big perch. That's a lovely fish. This is why I love coming to venues like this because 
every uh, every time that float goes under, you never quite know what you're going to latch into. I'll tell you what, that's a nice fish. Oh yes. There we go. This goes to show. And how about that? Right in the top lip, look at that. It's a beautiful fish. Lovely. Sign of things to come, hopefully. Okay, so we started the session obviously by chucking in some ground bait and cupping in a few richer balls over the top. I've been loose feeding castor and, and, uh, and hemp over the top of my main line. I have made a last minute decision to uh, put a shorter line in which I've been loose feeding with hemp. Hopefully that, that might be a line that will come to life later but it's a bit of a throwaway. I fished that like a, on a top six of pole. It's about a foot shallower. I just thought I could loose feed a bit of bait there in case anything happens on my main line or if I get piked. There's always the potential that line could be really good later on. So, like I say, I've started on my gram and a quarter rig out there, but I've just switched back to the uh, light caster rigs. I've been getting a few indications on the way down and I've been loose feeding caster fairly heavily. So I'm just gonna have a little bit of a look now on this caster rig. So, loose feeding a bit of hemp as well as a bit of castor just gives you some options. Because it's been quite good, I've been feeding a fair amount of bait. I even try just easing back a bit, see if I can catch them on the bottom again. And as soon as you stop loose feeding, the bites really start to slow down. So they're obviously responding really well to loose feed. I mean, topping up with, I had a real good run over the ground bait right at the start, as you'd expect. But with the loose feeding, I think the fish are naturally wanting to come up in the water. So like I said, I've gone back onto the light rig just to see if we can uh, catch a few of the better stamp fish. There is quite a few small fish, like there's little dace, there's the odd bleak. That just shows you the pulling power of, of ground bait when you when you ball in a natural venue like this. All the fish, you know, in the area, obviously fish being very inquisitive, they'll all swim into the pack and have a look at what's going on. Now it's relatively early in the session to be trying to catch on casters over the top, but I just feel like there's a few better stamped fish knocking about. A little bit of an indication there. So in, de in this depth of water, that little bulk and a, and, a, and a spread shot underneath it's absolutely fantastic. Generally speaking, the fish are, are feeding in that bottom sort of three feet of water. I wouldn't hesitate coming up in the water if I was, if I was missing bites or getting strange indications. But just to start with, I'm just gonna give that a little bit of a lift and a drop, see if I can spur one into having a feed. There's definitely a few fish down there. I keep seeing the odd, the odd bubble come up. Maybe Luke can pick that up on the big doofer. Another little bite there, look. Just gonna put some new bait on, I think that's just shelled me. So, obviously this early in the session, caster, obviously a great bait to catch on. It generally catches a slightly bigger fish. I had that big perch on a caster. I'm not completely burying the hook or anything at the moment. I don't feel like it's, there's any need for that. We're not quite at the faffing stage yet. It's going all right. So okay, so just laying that rig out nice and flat, keeping everything nice and tight. Loose feed a bit of bait, and I'm keeping in touch with the float just so I can read bites on the way down. Obviously with loose feeding bait, it's trying to find out what depth the fish are feeding in, and you can adjust your shot in and your rig to, to suit. Generally speaking, the fish will take it as it settles. As the rig settles and the, the bait um, reaches the bottom, I've got it set at dead depth, so the caster will, will just get down to the bottom 
and the rig will all set and everything will be in a straight line. And any little indications I get then will, will show up really positively on the bristle. Again, another little indication. Give them a bit more. I'm hoping we'll catch some nice roach on this later on. Maybe even on that short line as well. So all I've done is plumbed up another line at sort of six sections of pole. I can just feed with a catapult, keep everything nice and tight, and that way I can have a look at it, have a look on that line in a bit, hopefully there'll be a few stamp fish waiting for us. So the great things about these hollow bristle floats, and I've got that right down. With a little bit of sunlight on the water, it really shines bright, so you can see every little indication, it's great. Little bite then, and the little dip. They're small fish. There we go, that's a proper bite. Percy the perch. That's the second perch I've caught on caster. Just nailed him on the top lip, there we go. Little Percy. I'm hoping there'll be a few roach on caster later. Because I remember from visiting this venue years ago, there's some real big ones. Hopefully feeding baits like caster and hemp later in the session we'll be able to catch catch a few bigger ones keep feeding that short line so what i'll do i'll try and get catching a few more fish and get a few bites let the session um progress a bit and i'll let you know what i'm what i'm doing with my feeding and how i'm catching So I've just um, switched on to that shorter line that I've been feeding with hemp and the odd caster. Just thought I'd try a maggot over it and I've caught another nice sort of perch. So that line, the main line, out at 13 metres has just started to slow off a bit. So I've cooked in another ball of ground bait with a similar amount of uh, loose feed in it as to what we started with. So one more ball with a, uh, with a decent amount of loose feeding. Try and settle the fish down. I'm going to continue loose feeding out there, but this gives a good opportunity to try this short line. Now, I've not tried hemp on this line yet. I am loose feeding hemp and a few casters. But I just thought this might be a good opportunity to try this short line. Like I said, I've been loose feeding it for a couple of hours now, so I'm expecting there to be a few fish there. I will continue loose feeding that long line as well. The wind has picked up, which is not a bad thing. A bit of ripple on the water is always good. I've looked another nice fish here. Single maggot over that short line. Now it's behaving like a big perch. Not necessarily got the right gear on for this. Yep, that's a, I think it is a big perch where it's just tearing about. Difficulty is there's quite a lot of you probably can't see see from home, but there's quite a lot of uh, weed under the water here. It drops off quite quick, and in that shelf there's loads of weed, and so it's just a case of trying to keep them away from that. 
until he's ready to come up. Feels like a nice fish. I've not seen him yet. Lovely. Another nice perch. Put my net under him. Oh, beautiful fish. Tell you what, that's a good stamp. Interestingly, I've mainly fed hemp. It just shows you, obviously, look at him. He's a beautiful fish. Pound and a half, maybe a bit bigger. I only just nicked him. Lovely. So, it just shows you obviously with keeping another swim going, just gives you another option, somewhere else to go. And naturally, I think I'll try that again. <laughs> so, I've loose fed mainly, mainly hemp, odd caster. I'm just fishing a red maggot on the hook. If I'm feeding hemp and things like that, I do generally like to try a maggot first, just to see if the fish are there. And then if, there, if, there's, if there's roach there, obviously they'll take a maggot and you can always try hemp, but I don't like to... There we go. I don't like to go straight in with a roach. Straight in with hemp until I'm sure there's enough fish there. My sort of rule is with hemp, unless you're going in and getting a bite almost straight away, real positive bite and you're not missing them, I don't tend to, uh, I don't tend to fish it on the hook. Reason being, it's a lot slower. It can be a bit slow to get it on the hook. Um, and if you're, you're missing bites, even if the stamp of fish is quite good, but if you're not catching fast enough, it's not, you're not being efficient, especially, in, you know, if we're talking about match fishing, where maybe you'll catch three slightly smaller fish on maggot and uh, one bigger on hemp, you're going to be better fishing, fishing maggot. But I'll keep loose feeding both lines in hope that, and keep two lines going, another fish, keep two lines going. We didn't milk that fish then. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have a little play at this line now and see if I can sort this inside line out. Maybe catch a few more fish on it and I'll let you know how I'm getting on. Okay, so like I was just talking about earlier, I've been loose feeding this short line um, with hemp, odd caster. And after that line slowed down over there, I've dropped in on this short line, I had a couple of nice perch and a couple of roach, and it's been really good. Now, last truck I had another perch that's probably about a pound on single maggot over the top of um, my loose fed hemp and caster. Interestingly, um, I've not fed that many casters, and obviously there's a few perch feeding. So over to my left, I found a similar depth of water, and I've fed some chop worms and some casters in hope that I can actually target a few big perch. And to be honest, that's why I love coming to venues like this, especially pleasure fishing, because, you know, I'd, I'd put some ground bait in, expect to catch maybe odd skimmer and a few roach. And I've caught some roach, I haven't caught a skimmer, and I've fed hemp quite heavily here expecting to catch roach really well on hemp. I haven't had a single bite on it, but what I have got is big perch. So obviously you have to be ready to change things up. I think the key, there we go. 
I think the key is being able to change when you need to. And don't be too set, you have another perch. And don't be too set in trying to do what you want what you want to do and and go where the day takes you. So what I'm gonna do is keep fishing this line for a bit. I've started feeding a few more casters on this. Now I know there's so many perch feeding. Um, and I'll give that line over there a go and see if we can catch a big one. So maybe on a full dendy or something. So uh, yeah, I'll, what I'll do, I'll carry on fishing and I'll let you know how it pans out. When I go over on that, when I have my first look over there on that other line, get the camera back on and see if we can uh, see if we can get an action shot of how that pans out. Well, folks, I talked about going on another line and I put some bait in a bit further out and I've not even had to have a look at it, to be honest. Fishing's been really good on this line. Been loose feeding casters, actually loose fed a few maggots. I've been catching perch and roach. It's been, it's been one of chuck, to be fair. There's been loads and loads of fish feeding. It just shows that, um, we see loose feeding bait short on that separate line has been uh, so productive today I've current, continued loose feeding on my long line, and in all fairness, that's not been that good. I did go in and catch a half decent roach, and a pike took it almost straight away, which probably explains why that line dropped off a cliff all of a sudden. And I've continued to keep feeding it, and it's not been, um, it's never really come back to what it was. So I've just concentrated on this short line, and it's been absolutely fantastic, to be fair. I've had a really, really great day's fishing on a venue like this, so close to home. I know it's not a match fishing venue, but it's great to come out and I even managed to I even managed to catch one in the edge whilst I'm just finishing off. But it's been absolutely fantastic. And like I say, fish a venue like this so close to home, it's been absolutely brilliant. And not much fishing makes a change, and it's nice just to come and work a few things out. And time on the banks, you know, it's absolutely great. And it's something I love to be doing all the time if I can. Just work gets in the way. Um, so yeah, I've had a really great day's fishing and you know, if you ever get a chance, an opportunity to come down to Chardley Marina, it's day ticket in the site office. And it's absolutely fantastic, a gorgeous venue. And loads and loads of fish of all different sizes, so well worth a visit.